Welcome to Time for Tots. Our story today is Charlie Crow in the Snow. And there's Charlie, and all the snowflakes are falling around him. At the top of a grassy hill, overlooking a stream, stood Charlie's tree. He was so proud of his magnificent home. Sometimes Bear and Swallow came to visit, and they told stories and watch the sun set. See, there's the sun setting behind them. Charlie felt like the happiest crow alive. Oops. But all of that was before streams, things started happening. First, the sun disappeared, leaving the sky gray and cold. Maybe it's staying in bed, thought Charlie. A few days later, the leaves on his tree started to flutter away, stop! Come back, he squawked. See, there's all the leaves blowing around. And when Charlie went for his Sunday bath, he got the biggest surprise of all. Somebody had turned the water into glass. Poor Charlie. How confusing it all was. Bear and Swallow will know what's going on, he thought, and he hopped off to find them. But all around was oddly quiet. Charlie was just about to give up his search when he bumped into a squirrel. She looked confused, too. Have you noticed all these strange happenings, she whimpered. Charlie nodded. Whatever next, he asked worriedly. They didn't have long to wait. Moments later, white flakes started floating down from the sky. Oh dear, exclaimed Charlie. These look like bits of cloud. But the clouds belong in the sky, cried Squirrel. Next, it'll be the stars, and maybe even the moon will fall down, she shrieked. She looks pretty upset, doesn't she? Suddenly, her squealing was interrupted by a deep, growly voice. Keep it down out there, the voice said. Some of us are trying to sleep. There you are, bear, exclaimed Charlie. Help us. The clouds are falling down, and the water has turned to glass. Oh, Charlie, laughed bear. It's not glass. It's ice. He told them all about the cold winter, when swallows fly far away to the sunshine and bears stay in bed to keep warm. Charlie and Squirrel peered into Bear's den. See behind Bear, there's his den. It looked so cozy. You're very welcome to join me for a snooze, he said. Ooh, thanks, Bear, squeaked Squirrel. And in they went. Charlie and Squirrel concentrated hard on falling asleep. But these leaves are so itchy, whispered Charlie, having a scratch. Squirrel tossed and turned. I just can't sleep, she sighed. Singing can help, said Charlie, and he started humming. Squirrel joined in. They were just about to reach the chorus when Bear sat bolt upright. Enough! Bears need their sleep, he boomed. You two fidgety fleas will have to go. Shoo! Back outside in the cold, Squirrel's teeth started chattering. What now, she asked. Well, said Charlie, if we can't sleep through the winter, let's fly away like Swallow. At Charlie's tree, Squirrel was in charge of packing for the journey. And look what she packed. It's all food. Just a snack or two to keep us going, she said. Charlie steadied himself for takeoff, then took an enormous leap. Sunshine, here we come, he squawked, and there they go, and look what's falling. Some of their food supplies are falling off. But it wasn't so easy flying with a passenger. Oh dear, cried Charlie. Oh no, cried Squirrel. Oh help, they both cried together. They closed their eyes and waited for the crash landing. But instead, they landed flump in a soft, snowy heap. That, said Squirrel breathlessly, was the most fun ever. And they soon discovered there was plenty more fun to be had in the snow. See, there they are throwing snowballs. Isn't winter perfect, laughed Squirrel. See, here they're playing on the ice. Oh yes, Charlie agreed. Although, I wish Bear and, Swir Bear and Swallow were with us. Then a lovely idea crept into Squirrel's mind. Er, Charlie, she said, all this fun has made me very hungry. 
I'm going to go and get us a snack. Squirrel was gone for a long time. Where is she? Charlie wondered. His tummy was starting to rumble, so he hopped up the hill to find her and see if there's Squirrel. When Charlie reached his tree, Squirrel was not on her own. Surprise, giggled Squirrel. I made them just for you, Charlie. They'll keep us company until a real bear and swallow come back. And see, she made a snow bear and a snow swallow. Oh, Squirrel, said Charlie, thank you. What a lovely thing to do. Snow bear and snow swallow didn't say much, but that didn't matter. As Charlie and Squirrel watched the snow glowing pinkly under the setting sun, Charlie once again felt like the happiest crow alive. And that's the end of our story. And I thought we might like to make a crow. And this is what my crow looks like. So I just took a toilet paper roll and some black electrical tape. And I cut pieces from the black electrical tape. And then I wrap them around. So I put an end in here. Just made sure it was touching the one from before and tuck that under here. And then I cut, took some yellow craft foam. And I cut out two legs. A yellow legs, yellow legs and a yellow beak. And then I stuck them on my crow. And then I had googly eyes, so I glued them on. But if you don't have googly eyes at your house, you could just take a little circle from like when you punch paper, and you could glue on the white circle and then put a black dot in the middle for the eye. And then I had some feathers. So I just took the feathers, and I put them on the back of my crow, and then I just took some more black electrical tape and I taped them on. So now he's got two wing feathers. And then I also taped one in the top here so he'd have some feathers at the top of his head. And I just taped it inside there as well. And then we have a crow and we can play with it. Thank you. <laughs>